Where but where where were you at, man? If you, if you if you if you if you were just a regular job out on the compound, like sweeping the sidewalks, you made twelve cents an hour. Oh my god! Yeah, I mean, and plus, you know, Unicor is the government entity. I was in when Twin Towers went down, and mm-hmm. the factory in Milan, Michigan, was a file cabinet company. Mm-hmm. We worked around the clock for about two months straight making file cabinets to replace the ones at the at the Pentagon. But because I owe restitution and working in the factory, they take 50% of your pay. So I was living on $100 a month, basically. And, you learned to budget and, in prison. And all that, all that went into your commissary. Right, yeah, yeah. And to break it down for you, I would basically put $30 on my phone for the month, and buy the rest, you know, you know your soups and your chips and stuff like that, just to get you. You knew how to budget, when you could eat, what you wanted to eat, because the child hall is always serving something that you want, you know. Or let me tell you this: I will never eat turkey a la king again. I will not look at it. <laughs> There's just certain things I will not eat no more. You know, I mean, but for the most part, you know, it is what it is. It, I mean, yeah, you. There, truthfully, there were times during, you know, you can become so uh, involved in activities and classes and stuff. It's like there ain't enough time in the day to get it all done. And you're in prison, you know. Uh, 12 cents. I know it's, it, you, 12 cent, 40, I mean, 50 cent. And then they was hitting right. you for half. So you was getting 25 cent. An hour. Yeah. Right, oh, my God. And working my ass off. Working and, eight and, hours a day. And people outside, outside the prison is over your complaint. It's over here complaining uh, about 12, I mean, t- you know, $10, $15 an hour, and they want McDonald's. Uh, you know, to, they, I, don't, I don't have no other payments, though. I don't have no, no house payment, no light bills, no nothing, no car payment, no, no insurance. You know, I, I'm not trying to, you know, okay, uh, you know, free... Those people are free. A lot of people used to say to me, I can't imagine. Well, it's not for you to imagine because you've never done anything wrong. Right. You know, yeah. You know, it's not for you to imagine what it's like. And it's not it's, it and, and it's not for you to want to either. Right. You, you right. don't you don't but want to as, imagine that. No, no. I mean, it's not like T V. I mean, for the most part, you know, it, it boils down to it. You're sitting there near the end of your bit, and you're thinking, man, you know, if I could have just got laid three or four times a year like it is when you're married and ate a couple of steaks and had a couple beers throughout the year, this ain't a bad gig, you know, truthfully. But, you know, I like my freedom. I do like my freedom. I like being able to get laid when I can. You so, know, you understand what I'm saying? So, drink is- so, yeah. w- so is it safe for me to say – uh, for a person that does, you know, like ten years, let's let's just say ten years, because I I can't see myself yeah. doing, I can't see myself doing yeah. life or anything like that. But let's just say ten years. Would it just would it be safe to say that motherfucking prison humble the fuck out of you? Uh, I came out thinking I owed the world. The world owed me nothing. Mm. I was even. I was, you know. It makes, like I said, it makes you a different person. And who that person is, is you. You have to decide whether you want to become part of the animal prison is, or do you want to move beyond that? Right. You want to do your own thing. And, you know, I took classes, and I was in what you would know as, we call it juveniles at risk or something, juvenile awareness. I forget the name, but it was basically scared straight. Mm-hmm. And I was in that for four years. You know, some of those kids knew who I was before they got there. My nickname was Earthquake, and they knew who Quake was before they walked into that prison. Right. And, you know, I mean, it, you know, it was, uh, yeah. And the counselors would say, you can get more out of those kids in two hours than we can in six months. You see, these, these, these kids, these, these kids out here that be doing all this bullshit, they, they don't know. Oh. Uh, they they don't know. No, they think they, they think they hard. No. They think they hard. But when that yeah. motherfucking reality hits, yeah, well, you're gonna wish is, that you, you know, was they, at they, home they, with they, your they, mama. They're, 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 
you know, you know, when you're in trouble, who's the first person you call out for? Is your mom. Your mama. You don't yep. call out for your. Yeah, you don't call out for your gang, your gang friend. Nope. Yo, as soon as you're behind your, as soon as you're behind that bar, your gang friend forgets all about you. It's on to the next one. Mm -hmm. You know, and they don't. You know, there were some uh, true original old gangsters in there with me, and they would. They're like, you have no idea, you young buck. You know, you think you're hard. Come, come here. Come here. <laughs> and you know, this is, <laughs> you know, yeah, come, yeah. Come, come, come over come here. here. Come here. Yeah. Now, hey, hey, yeah. get, get over here. Get no, you, yeah. you, you, right there. Get, yeah. come here. I yeah. like you, and oh. I want you. So we could do this yeah. the easy yeah. way. Or we could do this the hard you way. You want to be the husband? If I see a man I like, I tell him like this here. I like you. He like you. And I want you. Now yeah, we can do this the easy way, or we can do it the hard way. The choice is yours. What you want, Tom? What's it gonna be? Husband or the wife? Wanna be the husband or the wife? Oh man, so yeah. you you uh you you came out uh you 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 came uh, out. When what what year did you come out? I any school you Way. I went in shortly before I turned 30, got out shortly before I turned 40. So right. I missed my entire 30s. So you and this so was you, in 2004. All right. So you when you, I came you, out. I, you you came out. Of course, we already we we already talked about your trucking career and everything. But yeah. but before yeah. you but before you got into your trucking career, you you had a little bit of trouble after you got your license. To get right. into a and get into a truck, what was what was your issues yeah. with some of the with some of the companies that you tried oh. to get with? Um. Well, when I come out, I didn't get right back into trucking because when I was in the final four years at Milan, I learned the trade of die setting. Mm -hmm. So I went into that for a few years, but that was kind of when the economy was. Start. I got laid off three times, went on unemployment, and she goes, "You have any?" Uh, I said, "Well, I used to drive truck." And she says, well, we're giving grants to get your license. I'm all about it. Let's go. And I got it back, uh, you know, and the, the school said, you know, we can't guarantee you placement because you're a felon. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, I, I uh, you know, I applied to a few companies and I, there was one that was out. Well, they're out of New Lockport, New York. I don't know if I really want to use their name. You know, that's not, but they hired me on. I went down, it was out of Bedford, Indiana. Mm -hmm. uh, a buddy of mine lived in Bloomington. I went down there and applied. And the guy actually, you know, I don't know if you know that much about Indiana, but once you go south of Indianapolis, it's totally different than it is up north. Mm -hmm. And the guy actually looked at me and he goes, what are you doing down here? Why are you applying down here? <laughs> I said, well, I've got a friend that lives in Bloomington and, you know, I may move down here. He goes, all right. You've got family down here. I'll talk to you. Mm. You know, that's that's just how, you know, and uh, that's how I got my, you know, got back into it. And, you know, I just never looked back and, uh, you know, worked with them for a while. And uh, so they was the, so they yeah. was the one that gave you they was the one that gave you your chance out of right. everybody that you but try I, for. Well, I got lucky, you know, I mean, you know, everybody's begging for drivers, man, you know, mm. and. You know, they just ask, are you over this? You know, you done with that? Oh, yeah, man. I love, you know, I'm going to move from one steel prison to one that's got two seats and a bunk in it. There's no toilet. You know? Like, you, know you know what? If you look. I, 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 I hate when. Oh, man. I, I hate when drivers say this shit. I, I really do. It really. <laughs> I, I, it, it It really irks me when. When I talk to a driver, rather is you know talk to him in person or over the or over Facebook or whatever, whatever. But I I was in this live feed, and one of you know a truck drive a truck driver commented in the live feed that we're in we're in a rolling prison, and I'm like that that really irks me when when somebody say that because here 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 here's why this this is why why I say it irks me is because we can park we can get out oh. we can walk anywhere around that we want to walk we can breathe we can uh -huh. we can do whatever the fuck we want to do this is this this yeah, ain't you know, it stop uh, calling it I, that 
I well, I, I'll I'll agree. I'll, I will concede that fact to you. But if you've lived inside prison, mm-hmm. this is this is basically the side of the cell. Mm-hmm. And you know, I found out a lot. You find out a lot about yourself in ten years. Mm-hmm. You know, when you're sitting there every morning at 530 in the morning before everybody gets up and listen to a little music, your personal time before the noise starts, mm-hmm. you do a lot of self-reflecting. And and you do the same thing sitting here. The noise, I mean, you're right. We're, we're able to get out. I'm gonna, you know, I can get out, go down, sit and have a meal right now. But as far as we're alone, right. I mean, we can reach out, we can talk on the phone. Right. You know, that's just. You're right. I, I will concede your fact to you that it's not a prison, a rolling prison. But, you know, it to me, it, you know, the bunk, you know, if it had a toilet, that'd be, that'd be about it. You, it can- you know, you're living in a space that ain't much bigger. Yeah, and that's that's the only reason I'm considering calling it that. Oh, okay. It's not because I know I'm free. I, 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 I love my freedom. Don't get me wrong. You know, do not get me wrong. I wouldn't be able to sit here and talk to you if I was in a rolling prison. Is, and I appreciate is, the fact that we're talking. Is is the is is you know I talked to another young man that you know that did a bit, and he he pretty much said that being in prison prepared him for being in trucking. Was is that the same for you? Uh, well, I was a truck driver before I came to prison, so mm-hmm. you know I just came back to it. Um. Prison opened my eyes to some other gifts that I have. Mm-hmm. That I am a good, I'm a good public speaker. You know, I can, uh, I can, you know, I can address people and make people understand. I'm a, I can put words to paper that are just poetic. And uh, you know, I mean, I have a, a gift that you don't realize you have. And and driving is one of them. You know, I'm good at it. You know, I'm I'm a natural. Mm-hmm. And, you know, this is maybe what I'm I'm supposed to do. I can't see my, you know, I worked in a factory, and it's just not me, if you understand that. I, mm-hmm. I'm not a slave to the, you know, I'm sorry for using that term, but, you know, being, you know, to the time clock. I mean, we're, we're on a treadmill as it is. If we start at 7 a.m., we're done by 9 p.m. You know, you're on that treadmill. But, you know, I mean, I'm just not that do the eight, hit the gate kind of guy, you know. I like being out here. We covered that when you, we talked about the other thing. Mm-hmm. You know, we travel these down these roads a hundred times, and we're always looking for something new. And that's the way you got to live out here with that. And uh, you know, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry that I, I understand your point that this is not a rolling prison, but it's. It, I you mean, know, you know, like I said, I, I I guess I can't. I you know, for a person that been there, I, I can probably. I, I could probably understand the 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 comment, but you know, just for yeah. like you know, for like regular people, regular drivers that never been in prison, and they they come out and say that you know that yo, this is my role in prison and all like that, bro. You never experienced prison, so how would you know? Yeah, you know. I mean, the I you know I remember. You know, you're counting down. You get to be a two-digit midget, then you're a one-digit midget. Mm-hmm. And I remember the day I walked out. My sister picked me up. And uh, you have no idea what that, you know, the first year is going to be like. You have you, mm-hmm. you can't plan for that. You cannot plan for that. And uh, I remember we stopped somewhere to give me some clothes for the ride home. And I wa- when you're so used to bland colors, you walk into a department stores and it overwhelms your eyes with all the colors. Mm-hmm. You almost got to shield your face. <laughs> um, you know, it's uh, I, I I swear. And it was kind of cool because, you know, my mom's birthday was in a few days before I got out. And we didn't let her know. And my sister told her, hey, I'm going to bring your, your birthday present by. And I got to go home and hug my mom shortly before her birthday. That's you know, that, that's what's up, man. Right, yeah. Uh, you know, I was very thankful <clears throat> that uh, nothing happened major to my family while I was in because you're not going to get to, you know, take part of that. Right. And, uh, you know, I'm thankful for that. And my family didn't come, you know, I wasn't a, I didn't need visitation. 
my family would come a couple times a year. That was good enough. You know what? Nothing changes for you. Like I said, Groundhog Day. You're the same day, day in, day out. You know, you wear the same clothes. You do the same thing. You, you're just a, a walking zombie, basically. You know, you're, you know. Uh, but, you know, I read books. I probably read 1,500 to 2,000 books in 10 years. You know, uh, you know, I had, you know, I didn't set idle. And when I came out, I had $200 in my pocket and had to start. And I went through three jobs in under nine months because I, and you get, I, the last job I lost, you know, I thought, what am I missing here? Am I better off in prison? What am I missing? And, you know, I mean, it, it about broke me. Do I go back to the drugs? And I just dug deeper. You just got to dig deeper within yourself to move forward. And the next job I got was that catalyst, you know, and I started working my way out of the hole. Nice and, job, you know, I just never looked back, you know, and, you know, I got a good job, started dating, you know, and, you know, we, we haven't, <laughs> you know, the first time getting laid after 10 years is an excitement, too. <laughs> You had know, all that hard, had all know, that build up for both of y'all, huh? For you and her. Yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> you know, you get up on, you know, he's like, "Oh, boys, up in it, man. You're not trying to rip my did, head did, off did, here." For the ten uh, years, for the ten years that you was in, did you did you have any female pen pals? You know, like how, how it is man, on TV. No, nah, man. It was you know, you know, that's that's drama. Oh, you know, okay. What, what do you got to offer a woman in prison? You know, I'd listen to these guys that were married trying to run their, their wives' lives from inside prison. Oh, you're going to do this? <laughs> She's like, yeah, right. <laughs> you know, what are you going to do? What are you going to do to her? You know? So, yeah, I mean, you. I just, you know, I was lucky. I didn't have anybody when I went in, and I didn't have anybody waiting for me when I come out. So you I don't know, think, I, I uh, you know, un unless you married, un and even... Even if you're married, that's that's even pushing it. Like, if a if 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 a man, if a male or a female happens to go, in, well, of course, you know we male, so we're gonna do it anyway. But for a male yeah. to go, for a male to go in and inspect the female to wait, uh, five, oh, ten, uh, I, I don't think that's gonna be feasible, and that's and that's not even gonna uh, be fair for the woman. Well, a friend of mine, I only made one real friend. We still talk. Mm -hmm. Uh, he lives up in Michigan, uh, you know, and, uh, his wife waited for him, you know, they're still together, you know, and that, I mean, and, you happen. know, that's what I'm saying. As far as being married. Yeah. I, I could see that, you know, being married, but yeah. you know, boyfriend and oh, girlfriend. If you, if you, yeah. I, I, I don't see yeah. that. I don't see that, you know, but, uh, yeah, I, yeah. Mm -mm. No. Um, no, but, uh, they, uh, you know, I mean, it, it's a, uh, I, I'm glad I didn't have to do it, truthfully. I didn't have to deal with that, mm -hmm. actually. That's uh, a big word. Uh, I, I'm lucky. I'm lucky. I didn't have to deal with that. You know, my, my, my girlfriend was Rosie Palm and her five sisters, you know. Uh, that you, that's just things you got to do while you're in there. Simple as that. So when you, uh, so when, when I got out, oh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No, so when you got, well, so I mean, when you got out, uh, when you got out, how how long was it before you, you know, you met the young lady and you know, and you told her, hey, you know, I did a ten year bid and all like that, and it is what it is with me. You well, need to take it or leave it. Well, well, you know, I would, I don't wear it on my sleeve. If if I wasn't to tell you, you would not know. I'm not that guy that walked around with a chip on my shoulder, you know. And if I went out with somebody, you know, I'd, I'd like, go out with them, let them get to know me, see the kind of person I am. And, you know, it's like, hey, I got something to tell you. You know, you're either going to like it or you're not, you know. But this is who I am now, and that's who I was. And I only think I had one, one woman ever say, nah, this ain't for me. And, you know, all right, good enough. But, you know. Uh, you know, uh, I, but I met some good women and the first one really wanted to settle down 
And I, I had to be honest with her. I said, you know, it's not fair to you and it's not fair to me after 10 years to come out of prison and say, you're the one. Right. You are the one. Right. You are the one. You know, and, you know, but after I, the first girlfriend, oh, homie went wild, man. He went plum ass wild. Uh, yeah, I didn't take no damn prisoners. <laughs> there um, you go. That's and, what's up, man. And, and uh, yeah, I mean, the first time was, oh, boy, gets up in there and is like, he ain't trying to rip my head off. It was nice and warm. <laughs> Boom! You know, it was over before it started, you know? <laughs> and, uh, yeah. And, but after that, game on. So, well, uh, well. Yeah. Well, Gary, man, thank you very much for coming back on and sharing your story, man. That's, you know what I'm saying? That's but, crazy. You know, it, 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 it is what you make it is. I've never looked back. Uh, I, You know, the, the thing is, you can be ashamed of what you've done, but never be ashamed of what who you are and what you can accomplish. You know, with the amount of felonies that I've got, you know, there is. If you apply yourself, you can get what you want, you know. It, it's not the end, you know. My mom didn't understand. She goes, "There are people who got murdered getting less time than you." I says, "Mom, there's a lot of things they don't they don't know about. I'm okay with it, you know. I accepted it, and uh, you know, I don't. I've I've created a good life for myself, you know. It taught me a lesson, you know. Did they teach it to me? No. I taught myself the lesson. Don't do that shit, you know. Uh, I was a fool. I'm not a fool no more." You know, I'm a 57 year old man that's got a good job. You know, got a good life, and I, I want to keep it that way. That's you know, you can't go around acting a fool. You know, I mean, here I am talking to some man that doesn't know me, that giving me the time to give me a platform to tell people it's gonna be all right. It's not the end. You know, uh, you know, you wouldn't have me on if you didn't believe in me. Exactly. You know that I could, and I and I appreciate you and, coming on. Thank you. Right. You know, I mean, it's a story. You know, I've been on TV interviewed over it. My niece has, you know, called me in to talk to her graduate class. I've talked to people. You know, I, like I said, I can tell a good, you know, I can tell the truth. People are like, you need to write a book, man. You know, but <laughs> nah, I'm not that I'm not that exciting. You say so, not yet. But man, not yet. I'm not done yet. I, I ain't writing my memoirs yet. So, but man, I appreciate it. Well, I Gary, man, thank you very much. I really do appreciate it. I, I I enjoy the conversation as I always do with you, man. And of course, you know, yeah. like I said before, you are a citizen. And if, whenever you want to come back on and chop it up with me, man, on or on hey, on the record or off the record, man, you're more than welcome. Uh, oh, you know, I I appreciate it. I respect it. You. I, I roam through your videos. You're doing a good thing for the people, man. Keep thank you, up. sir. You know, I will. Got to respect that. I will, All man. Right, well, you take it. it easy. You stay peace safe, out, sir. All right. Peace out, man. Yep.